This is the cross section of the spinal cord. Whenever you look at the spinal cord model, you always want to know which side's dorsal and which side's ventral. Because this big ball is right here, you know this is the dorsal root ganglion, so this side over back towards me is the dorsal side, while this part in here is the ventral side. So this is the dorsal root ganglion, dorsal side, ventral side. This is the gray matter, the gray matter of the spinal cord. It's divided into horns. This is the, these are the dorsal horns, these are the ventral horns. And these little blips here out to the side are the lateral horns. The dorsal horns, the ventral horns, and the lateral horns. Okay, then you look at the white matter. The white matter surrounds the gray matter, and they're divided into columns. This is the posterior columns here. You have a right and a left. This is the lateral columns, and these are the anterior columns. So you have the posterior columns, anterior columns, lateral columns. Okay, the little hole right here in the middle of the gray matter is called the central canal. The central canal has cerebrospinal fluid going down the spinal cord. Okay, since this is the dorsal root ganglion, it's easy to know that this is the dorsal root. These are the ventral roots here. This, this is the ventral root. You might want to like just mainly pay attention to this right here. This is the dorsal root. This is the ventral root. Where these two things come together, that right there is your spinal nerve. Okay, your spinal nerve is relatively short because it's gonna immediately branch into your dorsal ramus and your ventral ramus. The dorsal ramus comes and it innervates the skin and the muscle along the vertebra. Your ventral ramus would go to the front and either form a plexus or innervate your intercostal muscles. Okay, let's look at our three meningeal layers on the spinal cord. The outer one here in blue is the dura mater. This gray layer here that goes all the way around just like your blue does is your arachnoid mater and the layer that touches the spinal cord is the pia mater. So you have dura mater, the gray is the arachnoid mater, and then you have the pia mater touching the spinal cord. Okay, there are two layers that you need to know that are on this model. This is the layer that is underneath the dura mater. It's called the subdural space. You can barely put your fingernail in between the dura mater and arachnoid mater. Then you have this larger space here between your arachnoid mater and the pia mater, and this is called your subarachnoid space. The reason it has the gray in it also is because the subarachnoid space has cerebrospinal fluid and arachnoid mater mixed in with it. So that's why you have the gray in the space also. Outside of this space would be the epidural space, and you can see that on this model here. If you look at this model, let me raise it up just a little bit, you see that this is the spinous process, so you know that would be the bottom part, or the back part I should say, of the model. This right here is that big... Um, ganglia, so that's the dorsal root ganglia, so this would be the dorsal side, this would be the ventral side here, correct? So that makes this to the back side of the spinal cord, which makes sense with that being the spinous process. You can see your gray matter and white matter here. This is your pia mater. This structure here with the yellow with the red in it, that is the um, sub, I'm um, sorry, epidural space. That's the epidural space. 